Okay. Here we are in the section or section 284 of the book, text A. Were there any questions about it, what we covered last week before we go into this? All right. Let's look, let's look back up at our, our words in the uh, vocabulary. Uh, we'll have some of these, I believe, within this uh, in this text here. But uh, let's look at text A. And oh boy, it's not a good place to break. Let's break right here where I have my mouse, okay? And uh, Benjamin, can you start with that? Uh, of course. Hodiones acusa sa erga tu Christu, kai proscoles samenos duo te ton mataton. Mataton. And you heard of John's works of Christ and summoning for himself two of the disciples. Okay. And he's and summoned. And summoning. Summoning. Okay, it's partnership with it. So he, he summoned. So it was John who summoned, right? One summoning, okay? Two of the disciples. All right. Uh, can you start right here and go down to here for us here, Bobby? Bobby, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Bobby, are you hearing me? He just left. Uh, James, can you take it and go with it? Yes, sir. A pimson, rose stone, curion, legon, stue, ho, ercomenos. And uh, he sent to the Lord saying, are you the coming one or the one coming? Are you the one coming? All right. Go ahead and finish it down to the question mark, if you will. Okay. Hey, uh, alone pro a doko man, or are we waiting for another? Waiting for another. Oh, any questions there about that? Okay, Bobby, are you back? Yes, he is. Uh, Benjamin, can you just take it down to the next part, uh, question mark down there? Sure. Paragen nominoi de pros alton hoi andres epon iones Ho Baptistes Apestelen Gemas Pros de Legon Su E Ho Ercomenos. Uh, the men arriving for themselves to him said, John the Baptizer sent us to you, saying, Are you the one coming? Again, it's another question, isn't it? Okay. Yes, Bobby's not back yet, is he? He's just returned. Yeah, I'm back. My it's back. Froze. <laughs> okay. We're right here, Bobby. Where, the, where it is. Uh, can you go all the way down to here? From where the mouse starts here, and I'll highlight it. All of that. 
You're on um, you're on the second one, right? Yes. Uh, can you see what I've highlighted? Well, I can't see. Wait just a minute. Let me get down there, Kai. I thought he just got through reading. I uh, read down to here. Okay, maybe I can get. I get there. I got it somewhere. <laughs> I've highlighted what's a, if you can read what I've highlighted. Well, I'm on two eighty four. What in the world? Okay. Okay. Oh. This is from the 14th chapter of Acts, I think. Yeah. Well, well, I'm not able to find you for some reason. Let me get oh, here, here, here. I got it. I got it now. Hi, on the left. Yeah. Cada el fontes tes his acidin el fon es tes. Um, uh oh, that's that word. Um, fit bullion ca le le setes in perca ton logon cata basin ace a talion. And having passed through Pisidia, they came uh, unto Pamphylia. And let's see, and having spoken in Perga, the word they came down into Italia. Italia. And, and it's part of it, and, and speaking. Speaking? Uh, I put having spoken. Okay. That would speaking. be perfect tense if you had that there. Okay. 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 Speaking in Pamphylia, the word, speaking the word in Pamphylia. Okay. Okay. And yeah. it went down onto what? I'm sorry, and speaking in Perga. Yeah, so they were the they word. Just, they went down. Is that how you translate the rest, the rest of them too? They went down into Italia. Okay, all right. And uh, that's I think it's Acts 14 24, but I'm not sure. I think that's what this is. I think it's right out of the text of, the, of Acts. All right. Did anybody check that and see? Yeah, Acts 20, Acts uh, 14, 24. That's what I put out to the side. I don't think it's exactly that, but that's. This is pretty much the same. Crosses is where they put yeah. two or more words together. Okay, and this is three words put together, All right? All right. I see. Who are we back to? Benjamin or, or James? James. Okay, James. Can you handle this? Yes, sir. Okay, then. A pep luson. Ace. Antio crayon. And to crown. Uh, and from there they sailed away into Antioch. Okay. They sailed away into Antioch. And I think this is pretty much maybe some changes, a little changes, but it's pretty much what we have in the 14th chapter of Acts. Right. Got anything different on that? Okay, Benjamin, can you finish it out for us? Haragen, Haragen nonemoi da kai sunagogontes ten ecclesian anangelan hosa epoyesen hotheas metalton kai hoti enoitse ethnesi Thuran. 
uh, and arriving for themselves and having brought together the church, they announced how much God did with them and that he opened a door to the nations. to the nations. The nations would be the Gentiles, see. And that's another word for Gentiles. All right, any question there? They reported to what they what had been accomplished. All right. Now uh, do y'all want, want to do any of these texts B? Or you want to move on to the next lesson? Um, I didn't get number seven. Yeah. Might, be, might be some correction made before you had trouble among the words or something. Uh, kind of in general with the whole idea behind it. <laughs> Like looking upon the one speeding or something? I wasn't sure about that part. Or seeing the one speeding? Speeding or eating? I got, and having seen those feeding, what had taken place, they fled or they escaped. What, what was the last part you got? I said, uh, having, having seen those feeding, what had taken place, they fed. Feeding. One's feeding. One's feeding probably the, the yeah. uh, probably the, uh, the, the, one, the uh, swine into the sea. Okay. All right. What was the last part, Bobby? Having taken. Yeah, I said, uh, I said, had taken place, they fled. Had taken place, they fled. They escaped. You can say they have the escaped. Then take place, they escaped. I'm not. I guess I'm not hearing it in my mind how that makes sense in English. This is they fled. They ran away. Yeah, they fled. Oh, so maybe and and it happened or something. It happened that they fled. They fled. Uh... Yeah, it's it's Arius, isn't it? That was the part that was confusing to me. I didn't know how to get that in uh, English. <laughs> I, I, I jotted down Luke eight thirty four. I don't know if that's right or not. I was playing around about uh, about that. So about the uh, had taken place. I was having some problems. So Luke eight thirty four. I think. Let me look. Fingers won't work. Well, it's changed, I think, there. Let's see. Yeah, the uh, word had taken place is one I had a problem with. Yeah. That's Aris. Third yeah, it's world Aris. The yeah. I flee. The what now? Third person. Plural heiress. A few go, I flee. Uh, what about the tall Gagon Gaganos? Gaganos. The one uh, that's from Enoma. The one. The perfect participle. Yeah, the one being, the one having been. The one, the one fleeing. So is it, and having seen the ones feeding, 
And having taken place, I fled, or he fled. They fled. They uh, probably, yeah, uh, Giganos is probably referring to the the things that fled. It's probably the feeding of the swine in the context. That's not perfect. Oh, that was a perfect. What what's that, Bobby? Uh, the uh, Gaganos. Gaganos. Okay. Yeah, it, it is perfect. Okay. Perfect participle, active accusative, neuter single, singular. Excuse me. Okay. I thought that's right. Huh? So having taken place, they fled. Well, I want you to notice here, this is not them having taken place, but it's something taking place. Okay. Oh, it's there. Right. And so. singular. And it's, it's singular. However, a herd of swine would probably be neuter, and it would most likely be uh, uh, used a neuter neuter uh, singular and have a neuter singular verb okay all right well this part is simple of course but it's probably referring back to the swine most likely is what it's referring to and what what passage did you say that was from uh luke 8 34 okay. it's not exactly but it's, it had that word in there when i was trying to find that uh just got uh I thought it was uh yeah some taking place. Let me get out I'll get out of this and we'll look at Luke eight thirty four. Okay. Let me go back to Luke eight thirty four. I think I've got it. Yes. See the text here? Yeah. Eight. E34. This is E sword. Yeah. Okay. Okay, there it is. So this is a little bit different form here. What you have here, okay. Right. So uh, this is this is a participle here. Mm -hmm. This is not the participle we had in our in our text, was it? No. A little bit different, but it's from the same red word genomai. This is a perfect passive participle. That's what's in the text of the of the. Uh, this will be the majority text. I don't know if it, the uh, Nestle Alan text. This is Luke 834. I'll check it and see. I don't have it, but I can't put it on the screen. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Luke 834. Would you like me to share my screen and put it on? Yeah, go ahead. We can see it or not. Actually, uh, what the what we have is in the Nestle land text. Okay. Can y'all see that? I, I yeah. can't. Yeah. I can this see it. It's kind of small. It's small. Yeah, I can see it now. I was like, yeah, that's better. This is the inner linear on Bible Hub. Uh, this is what the Nestle land text has right there, what you got. Have and take place. Have and take place. 
Yeah, even if you just come in right at this spot, it seems a little weird in the English. Uh, but this isn't, obviously, this isn't the text translated. This is just the literal from the interlinear. Having taken place, they played. What, what, what was having taken place, though? Right. Then we'd have to go back to see. They saw them flee. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down to a steep place into the lake and were choked. And when they had fed them, what saw what was done, they fled. That's the King James. Oh. Demon, the uh, the demons were cast out. Yeah, the demon cast into the swine. Right out of the man and cast into the swine. And uh, then what they saw, they saw the pigs, the swine, going down and drowning themselves. Okay. Yeah. And those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled. That's what the New King James says anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, he picked this up because the partnership was in there. Okay. I'm going to go in. I stopped sharing. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to. Start sharing back with my notes. Oops, wrong one. All right, can you see it still? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other things you want to look at? It was interesting the ellipsis them being added because the participle here it seems to me anyway. Uh, boy, bo scontes. The ones feeding. The ones feeding, and then it the translation was as if the ones that were feeding them, okay. as in the hogs. But, but this doesn't quite say that. You almost have to pick it up as an ellipsis from the prior material versus. And, and without that, when you work in verse uh, number seven, it's difficult to put that together. Yeah, because you've got to pick it up from the context. And some, yes. Sometimes that's necessary. And this is a good illustration of it. You've got to look back at the context sometimes. Yep. It's uh, it's the pigs that were the swine that were being fed. See. Right. And they fled. Right. So go to the next lesson or do you want to, what do you want to do? Uh, hold on one second, if you don't mind. Let me check. There was one that I know seems strange to me. Uh, number four. Or no, no, it's uh, number number five. Excuse me. Okay. Hold it, hold it. I've got to back up. It is number four. Number four. Okay, so what had you rendered? <laughs> I'm sorry, I brought it up. Uh, <laughs> I rendered it as uh, now this sinning unto the brethren, you sin unto Christ. Okay, is that number four? That's, that's number four. That's five. That's five. Oh, that's five. Okay, sorry. Thusly, in that manner, sinning against or toward. Rather, you sinned against Christ. Yeah, the ace, uh, you're translating that as toward or against. Uh, 
I, went, I went and looked it up and did not. I saw the Bible verse associated with this. I went and looked it up and found it, and it did have it translated as against for ace, but that didn't make any sense to me. A kata seemed to me to be a better choice. Sin, sin is directed at the brother. It is toward the brother. Okay. Yeah, at would seem to make more sense than against <clears throat> from a translation perspective, I'm, I think. So it is directed at him. I think that's right out of the text of the Bible, too. Yes, yeah, I, I found it at one point because uh, the text in the Bible had against yeah. for ace. And I went and looked at the def lexical definition of ace, of course, and was not finding against. Well, so I thought it strange, and that's the reason I brought the question up. I wonder what the American Standard rendered on that. Uh, I don't remember what verse this is. I'm sorry. First Corinthians 8 12. First Corinthians 8 12. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes. New American yes. Standard says, and so by sinning against the brothers and sisters and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Okay. It's, it's translated ace is against also. Well, it's directed at them. The sin is directed toward them, right? And so okay. they're recipients of that of the uh, action of, of the sin, the sin is directed at them. Would pros, in a sense, be okay in, in no that problem. sense? The Holy Spirit shows ace. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I agree, of, of course, but... So, but I think there's a difference, a subtle difference is, uh, it is that the sin is directed at, toward them. Well, we should never direct any sinful action toward anybody. You sin against Christ. So now the sinning toward the brethren? Yeah, directed at the brethren. Okay. Ace is with a view to or toward. Right. So the okay. sin is like a, think of it like an arrow pointing toward something. And so it's directed at them. And the brothers said the brethren. Uh, probably it's brethren, but uh, your translation put brothers and sisters, which is uh, kind of a free translation, but that's what that means. I'm satisfied. And, and he, he uh, in doing so, he, he sins against Christ. Okay. It, yes. It's directed at Christ. So when we take any sinful activity and direct it toward a brother, or a sister, uh, and fellow Christian, then we're directing at Christ because uh, this passage is telling us that. I'm reminded of what happened in Stephen when they were sending against Stephen by stoning him. And so they had sent against Christ when they did it. Jesus remember, was standing, not sitting on the, at the right hand. All other passages, he's sitting. Right. So significance there, he's standing. I think he's showing his indignation at what's happening to Stephen, but that's my interpretation. I could be dead wrong, okay? But that's how I interpret it. Yeah, my, my original thought was why translate it against? I understand the direction toward, but against seems... Well, that's directed at somebody is against him in English. In that sense, of taking a free, free interpretation of it in English, a little bit of interpretation of the meaning of it. Yeah, just surprised I didn't see the lexicon support that. Yeah, or at least the one I, I took <laughs> one or two of them and didn't see that. Yeah, but what you say makes sense. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any others? Do, do you mind if we discuss four since you brought it up as well? Well, 
I said, to him who reckons something unclean, that is unclean. But the last part threw me off because it's got the demonstrative or whatever, that, and then unclean. So just that unclean. To the one reckoning or determining that something it is to be unclean. Notice the infinitive. You reckon something to be unclean. To that one, uh, it is unclean. And so it's elliptical. The word it is would be in here. Implied. Right. And the one who reckons something to be unclean, to him, to, to him it is unclean. If he thinks it's unclean, it is unclean to him. Or actually to this one, he kind of. So the to him, you're saying, you would say it, who reckons something unclean, to him it is unclean? Yes. So the to him portion should, should come after the comma then. Uh, what, what should come after comma now? The to him portion? Yeah, that's right there, to that one. And the words it is, is you know, it should be in italics where I have my mouse. Him it is unclean. I think that's right out of the text of the Bible, too. You think okay. something's unclean, it's unclean to you. And it may not be that God said it's unclean, but I think I think we can limit ourselves by our misinterpretation of God's word. Uh, let me illustrate this. Uh, it's like a goat. We got a we we want to let him tie a stake in the ground and put a chain around his neck. We got a fifty foot chain. And someone says, well, I, I think he might get over in the flowers. So I put an extra, I want to put him in to 49 feet. But he could have, he could have eaten up after 50 feet, but we limited him. My thinking is something is unclean. For instance, if I thought it was unclean to eat meat sacrificed to idols, then to me it is unclean. And I need to learn that God has allowed me to eat that meat if it's sold in the meat market. But I'm not going to eat it uh, if I if I think it's worse than an idol. But eating eating meat that's been that's been bought at a store, a grocery store, it's owned by a non-Christian, doesn't make the meat unclean. Okay, but if I thought it was, then I, I should be doing it. And there are some in the church that think a woman has to wear a head covering over her head when she worships and if they think she should then she should that woman if, if a woman thinks she should then she needs to cover it because she doesn't need to violate her conscience but she needs to study and learn that it's not uh need to learn the truth on that subject does that make sense what i'm saying yes sir uh, i looked at go ahead bobby I, I looked the, the word up against the mind, and it's Romans 14, 14. It's what it, where it's used, and it says it used to, and then t koinon ene ek no koyon, koina. It's this a. It's exactly like that in Romans 14, 14. So in that context, we have uh, problems with some people in the 14th chapter. And in that context, uh, I think what we have there is some were thinking that it was wrong to eat meat. And, uh, and, and that we have to get in that context to see what he's talking about. But we went through this in, uh, in the study of Romans and uh, there's a, uh, I've, I've put this up on YouTube. We have 13, 14, 15, 16 chapters when we went through them in the class. But that was eating meats there, eating and drinking something. 
if I think it's wrong to eat pork, then I shouldn't be eating pork. But the scriptures have made it clean. Now, Peter had trouble with it in Acts 10, didn't he? And he was, he'd been a, I think he'd been a member of the church for several years, and he still had some wrong thinking in his mind. Lord, I've never eaten these things common or unclean. And the Lord says, what thou cleansed, not call not thou common or unclean. See, now I think this is koinos is, is this word. It's koinos here, but I think the koinon is the, I think it's a neuter ending, okay? All right, adjective. So Peter had that problem. He had to, he had to have the Lord to reveal to him. And this, in that context, it was, he was talking about animals, but uh, the point was that the people that had been cleansed too, the Gentiles were cleansed, and the gospel that needs to be preached to them too. I think this is when the gospel first began to be preached in Acts 10. Very, and I think it's the same word is used, coin on, coin house. Okay. Does that help? I don't know. Yes, sir. It was me. Benjamin, you got any comments there about that? Yeah, just one more question, sorry. So we came up with, to the one who reckons something unclean, to him it is unclean. The one who is elliptical? Uh, to the one. It is a participle with an article. And a participle with an article functions as an adjective. The one reckoning something to be unclean. So this right here, these first two words will be translated to one reckoning. I see. With, a, with an adjective, with an article, it fu always functions as an adjective. The one reckoning something to be unclean, to, the, you know, to that one, it is unclean. And the it is would have, would have to be elliptical over here. Before between right where I have a where yes. I have a house. That helped a lot. Thank you. All right. And that's uh, again is that was the uh, 14th chapter of Romans. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Very good questions. And uh, it helps us a bunch. All right. Any others down here? All right. I want to move on to the next lesson. This is something that I think is very important. It is very important. Um, and we have in first, in Romans 14, uh, 8, I'm sorry, verse 27. Uh, we don't have this, but we could have it. This, there's three ways that we can have someone doing something. We can take a finite verb and it takes its subject in the nominative case all right it'd be a nominative case in the or it could be in, it could be an adjective okay so the subject could be in the it's in the nominative case and that's uh, we'll take a finite verb and that's uh, one of the first things we care about is finite verbs then we learn that an, an, an infinitive could take it could become uh it would take a accusative case noun as its subject. And they use a little bit different term for it, but it's like the subject, okay? So we could take a sentence, we could have someone doing something, and then we could have a complex sentence. We could say, John hit the ball. And then we could have the ball doing something. The ball got hit. See, it's a direct object. And then we could have the ball, and the ball broke the broke the window, or the ball the ball hit the man, or the ball the ball broke a window, or something did something like that. And in that case, we use an infinitive in Greek. So the direct object, the ball, would become it would be doing something. So we can make a much more complicated sentence that way. The third way we can do it is we can take a participle, and that's why he has this gen absolute here. And so we have here 
it's a supplemental participle. It supplements. And I want you to be aware with that file that I sent you, uh, Greek grammar and, and uh, syntax and grammar, lexicon and grammar notes file. Uh, you can look under genitive absolute, do it, search for it, and find more discussion of it. So this probably would be good to you get into that file before next week. Look at that file. Right. And uh, right here, this is an example of genitive absolute. Un Christu Parthontos Sarki Kai Humes Tain Atain in Elion Hope the Sase. So therefore Christ okay suffering right, ha, has suffered in the flesh. Right. And you, the you yourselves with the same mind, you have the same mind. Right. Uh, you arm yourselves. Uh, hope blood, uh, that's an armor or the part of the word for armor. OK, so what we have what this right here is your genitive participle. And so. Christ suffered in the flesh. So the gender absolute is one of the most common variations of circumstantial participle in the gender of absolute. It, it's a temporal, causal, or conditional subordinate clause. Any other verbal idea is added loosely to the main clause. The word absolute is from the Latin absolv, which I loose. It's loose from it. It's loosely attached to it. That's what that means. So we just put in the genitive case and the verbal idea is expressed by the genitive participle depending on it. So let's look at it here, genitive case. There's the genitive case now and it becomes the subject of this participle here. So, so there, Christ, and this is right, right out of 1 Peter 4, 1. So we have that there in that context. Now, my point, and I'll ask you to look into my notes on Romans 8, uh, 27. And what we have here is I make the point that the Holy Spirit could have used the genitive absolute, but he didn't in Romans 8, 27. And I, I want us to probably look at that next week. I'd like for us to look at that verse. Uh, if you have my book on the uh, Holy Spirit, uh, that would be volume one. Uh, you can look in the index, scripture index, and find where this verse is discussed. But my point is, the Holy Spirit could have used this form and had, he, he had that as an option. And the Apostle Paul had used it in other places, so it wasn't a fact that Paul didn't know about it. And yet he did not use that form. And so now I want us to look at that verse next week. Is that all right? Everyone study that verse. That was 827. And he could have used the of absolute, but he didn't. So that's the point I want us to see. He had that option, but he did not use it. And so we can't argue that he, he meant that to be the genitive to be the subject. The genitive can become the subject as it is here if it has a genitive or a participle. Does that make sense what we're saying? And we didn't have, we don't have one, a genitive participle in uh, the uh, verse 27 of Romans 8. Okay, let's look at it next week. I want to, uh, that's an assignment. I want us to look at that, my notes on that. And you can see what I'm arguing here. Maybe that'll help explain that passage a little better. Okay, questions? In your notes uh, that you gave us, did uh, is that uh, the genitive absolute? Is that something that you just put in? No, so, it's in there quite a while. Oh, okay. Uh, if you have those old notes, if you, uh, I, I, I thought I sent the notes out again the other night last week, but I might not have. 
Yeah, you did. I, that's the reason why I was asking that because I have the old ones on my Logos program, and so I, I wanted to make sure. Well, uh, what what you got the, the old ones? It's been on there for a couple of years, Jen's lasted probably three or four years in these notes. So you can okay. probably have it in there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I check. Uh, in volume one, it's a. Uh, begins on page 203 and goes for the next couple of pages. Ways to express subject and action is the title of it. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah, so I what, might save some time looking for it. What, what can the Holy Spirit volume one? OK, and if you don't have the book, if you, I'll send you an electronic copy of it so you can look at it. OK, mm -hmm. Benjamin, do you have the book? Yep. Okay. I got the, the the hard hard copies here on my <laughs> bookshelf. <laughs> oh, they take up a bit of space. I'm kind of wordy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's uh, let's end the class if that's all right for everybody. We'll start here at lesson thirty seven next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your attendance in class. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.